So good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, there is a long story, uh, which Anne already knows, uh, but I, I was just planning to be in Costa Rica today, but I couldn't fly. So, well, I suppose uh, that sometimes we have some inconveniences and life tells you where to be and where not to be. So apparently I couldn't be in Costa Rica. I couldn't board my flight, uh, but well, here I am with you because I really want to share with you um, these um, pedagogical experience I've had um, and well tell you tell you everything about it. So the presentation talks for a critical thinking experience and this presentation is going to be framed in the concept of quilting ideas so everything you're going to see along the presentation is going to be or has to do with uh, the concept of quilting okay good let me just get a little bit more of light on my phone for any notification i get from you guys and okay good i'll go on so now check if my presentation is working okay cool so i want to tell you a little bit about okay good so i was teaching english or i've been teaching english as language arts so we don't really teach english as a content language subject but it's more like english language arts in which we do lots of reading and lots of writing and we do lots of analyses we do lots of um critical analyses we make inferences we establish comparisons contrasts we uh establish uh, or we make conclusions out of the author's work etc so we make a more uh detailed emphasis and detailed analysis on the language content rather than studying english just for a second language itself um we do that work with eighth graders so i had two classes one class for boys one class for girls they are both eighth graders so that means that they are between now uh th this this um this idea emerged from the years 2019 to 2021 <coughs> we i'm sorry we are a calendar b school so we teach uh from june to june and so this project started in 2019 to 2020 and then from 2020 to 2021 and uh, well it's been running also but uh, everything started in 2019 2020 and then 2020 2021 our eighth grade students have uh, english language arts classes uh during 10 hours a week so they take basically two hours daily of uh, English language arts class. So pretty much this is the context. And our main focus, as you can see it on the picture, has to do with conversation, discussion, and critical thinking on the readings that we take. Okay, so I just want to show you here the topics that we discuss during all the year and also the that provoking question that we focus on. So, for example, we have here the rites of passage. It's the main topic that we discuss and the the provoking question is what are some milestones on the path to growing up? So we we work in our discussion basically focused on this question what are some milestones on the on the path to growing up another big topic that we study is the holocaust how do we remember the past is the question then we go through what matters and when is it right to take a stand so just to give you a little bit more of context in here we work on uh, political decisions we work on laws we work on demonstrations and we work on strikes all over the world and why people are making a stand to make their rights um to yeah to, to to make their rights possible another topic is human intelligence and the provoking question is in what ways can people be intelligent 
So in here, we we not only talk about people's intelligence uh, itself, but how people's intelligence has been able or has enabled people to create different kinds of things to the extent of, for example, creating artificial intelligence in this moment. And the last topic of the unit is inventions, as you can see right here. So the, the, the provoking question is, are inventions realized through inspiration or perspiration? So I wanted to show you here the five main topics that we covered along the school year and the five provoking questions to show you how we are working on our English language arts class and how we enable the students to work on their critical thinking and how we enable students to to take a stand you know out of these topics again this is with eighth graders so what happened I was working with these students in the context I just told you, but when we were discussing the topics I showed you previously, I was seeing that students had a really um, intense, I would say, a really intense feeling for discussion, a really intense feeling for critical thinking. They were arguing their classmates, they were making really strong debates, and they were uh, developing their ideas in the discussion classes in such a way that I thought it was really important to, to, to motivate students much more to widen their critical thinking skills, to be able for them to be able to, to communicate much more and investigate much more and strengthen those skills. So what was I doing? Is I was I was just like, you know, as a as a as a tailor, I was uh, trying to figure out what to do, how to put pieces together, and here is where the quilting um metaphor begins so i was just trying to <coughs> sorry to to figure out how to put all those pieces together in order to make a, a really interesting idea possible so that's where the ted talks um come in so i said what if i show my students lots of ted talks that discuss very thought-provoking topics and also inspire people to to take action on different kinds of uh, situations life experiences technological topics science topics life topics psychology topics etc so i thought uh, that the ted talks could be a very interesting way to start and well um we started including ted topics and ted talks in the english language arts class so just to give you a little bit of context we have richard soul Woorman and harry marx in 1984 they were um the the creators of the ted talks and um Okay, sure thing, sure thing, Anna. Thank you. So they were um, they were the creators of the TED Talks. Let's say that C is for technology, E stands for education, and D stands for design. So originally, these conferences were meant to discuss basically technology, education, and design topics only for a very narrow audience, a very exclusive, or we can say elite audience. Okay who was able to get the talk or listen to the talk, right? But a long time, this TED has been spreading a lot to TEDx, uh, to TED education, to videos, uh, to TEDx women, for example, and has enabled people the possibility to make their own TED all around the world there is a big TED conference which still continues it's very exclusive but they have been enabling people from all over the world and organizations from all over the world to use the TED as a, a what can we say as a, as a quality as a quality uh, seal in their organization making the TED exactly in the same way as it should be anywhere in the world so well I decided to include the TED Talks in, in my class, just again, as watching the videos and analyzing 
the people's point of view from what they discussed on the topic they were talking about. And then, well, uh, what I'm going to show you uh, right now, because I just wanted to give you like the really big context, is uh, how the, 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 the TED Talks uh, started or turned from a class material to a much, much bigger uh, concept of discussion, analysis, political action, identity, and narratives. Okay, so coming back a little bit, I started with this just as a pedagogical tool, but then it turned out to be something completely, completely different, which I'm going to tell you today by showing you my research design, the objectives of the of this research, the questions, the justification, the theoretical framework, the inquiry and the, some background. Of course, I'm going to give you some results, too. Why some results? Because this uh, research is not finished yet. It's an ongoing research. So we begin with the inquiry in the quilting process. Me, again, as a tailor, as I was showing here, and me having lots of tools as the ones I'm showing here, the thread, the scissors, um, the sewing machine, okay, the needles and everything. So we begin with the inquiry also as a quilt because... Uh, the quilt puts together many pieces and so the inquiry comes out of many pieces too so here we begin with the pieces of fabric the pieces of fabric pretty much show us the inquiry of this research and uh, the pieces of fabric um explain three main concepts the first one is the transformation of english language learning as the habitats Second, discussion on content. And third, the institution as an opening territory to pedagogical creation and to the construction of knowledge. So explaining a little bit the first one, which is the transformation of English language learning, when we talk about habitats, the inquiry pretty much uh, wants to see how students inhabit different types of atmospheres or different types of contexts depending on how they leave their English language learning process, okay? So my habitat of English can be one completely different to my classmate or to my classmates because my experience with the language has been completely different to others. So here we study English as, or English language learning as a habitat, as the way I leave the language, as the way I I coexist in the language with others and the way I uh, exist in the language and for the language and towards the, the, the language too. There is a discussion on content and there has always been this discussion on what to teach in my English class. What should, what should I teach? Should I teach grammar? Should I teach vocabulary? Should I teach all the skills? What should I teach? So this inquiry focuses on what type of content are we supposed to teach? What's good? What's bad? What's better? What's not the best? Okay, so this discussion on content is one that we definitely uh, need to work on okay and it's an inquiry not only for this research but for all the all the pedagogical experiences that we are going to have how uh, are my students uh, relating to the content i am teaching is it good how good is it the third uh about the institution as an opening territory so uh, I'm pretty sure that this uh, experience wouldn't have been the same if the school I'm working at uh, didn't allow me the possibility to innovate, didn't give me the possibility to make things different, and didn't allow me to, to make uh, changes in the classroom. So the institution was a really, in this case, institution meaning the school, was a really uh, helpful and supportive um, territory okay that opened its mind and uh, really gave people the possibility to make changes in the classroom right so uh it, as part of my inquiry i also have the institution which enabled me to make changes in the classroom and heard me as a teacher heard my uh proposals and said go on so 
from 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 here i begin with the questions okay there were three main questions that i uh decided to to build in this research and uh, again as i was saying uh this project started with the ted talks as a class tool but then it turned to be uh something completely different that's why my questions uh, are going to give you a light of what we are discussing in this in this research also. And it's uh, related to the cosmovisions. How are those students' cosmovisions understood in the TEDx talks? I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the cosmovision uh, in the presentation. Uh, but in here, cosmovisions are understood as the different ways of uh, thinking the world. Okay, so how are eighth graders cosmovisions understood? And uh, how the configuration of a student's identity also in this process? And how are students are interpreted as historical subjects or subjects of rights in their habitats of English? So here are the three main axes, the cosmovisions, the configuration of a student's identity, and how are those students historical subjects or subjects of rights through everything through uh the development of tedx talks in the english language arts class good so in here through those questions i had uh, the objectives okay and these objectives are represented in my case with the needle okay because the needle is the one that sues everything and uh, if uh, if the needle is the one that puts everything together those are the objectives i need to reach okay by using the needle the first one is understand the cosmovision of eighth grade students okay the second and well this is like the 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 the, the main one the second is interpret the way the students are historical subjects and subjects of rights and the third one is analyze the configuration of the student's identity when developing their political action in their tedx so i said more than using the tedx uh, or the ted talks videos for the classroom instruction of, or for the development of content students have the possibility of building their own ted talk okay tedx talk i have to give you the disclaimer ted is the main organization it's a big conference worldwide but the tedx is like uh, a little daughter i would say a little daughter from the ted conference and the ted the ted x the x stands for independently organized so i said my students have a very uh high potential to make their own ted x talk okay and express themselves okay express their vision of the world express what they feel about different topics and uh, communicate to the world what they feel about a certain topic of their interest so that's why i'm coming back a little bit more that's why the ted talks became uh from or turned from being a pedagogical tool to being something that students are building are tailoring okay that's why the inquiry comes as a pieces of fabric which have to do with how students live the language how the institution opens the doors to transformation and what type of content shall we use what type of content critical thinking content thought-provoking content okay and that's why the questions point to the cosmovisions of the students i the students identity and the students as historical subjects or uh, subjects of rights uh that can be empowered by making or developing their ted talk so that's why i set th these objectives for the study using the needle as the metaphor for the objectives understand the cosmovision interpret how students are historical subjects and analyze their stu the student's identity okay there are also three objectives very ambitious actually but i'm pretty sure that we as teachers or we as people who are in the field of education are really ambitious and we always want to get much more and want to give much more to our students so i also set three objectives one that is local because if we uh make 
a TEDx uh, conference, a TEDx, yeah, a TEDx conference locally, I was thinking that we were likely to receive schools and students and people from the area, the school's area or from the school city, okay, uh, to see our event and also, you know, motivate other schools and other teachers to try um no, to use the TED Talks, I would say better, to use the TED Talks in a different way rather than just a classroom instruction tool. And same thing. So if our, if we made a national conference, a nas- uh, well, a TEDx conference in, 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 in Colombia, so it would have also a national impact, even though it was not an objective, but it was a national impact too, okay? And of course, when the videos are recorded, when the videos are in a streaming, and when we are uh, to browse for, I don't know, TED Talks on uh, Animal Mistreat, well, we could be able to see our students' videos internationally, no matter where you are in Costa Rica, here in Colombia, there in Africa, no matter where you are, but you are able to see those contents of the students' development of ideas through the TEDx, okay? Again, these are three really ambitious uh, objectives, which are uh, reached at different levels, depending on where the study is. In this moment, um, give me just a sec. In this moment, uh, we I could say that we are in the local and national impact, not in the international yet, because we are processing the videos to be uploaded in the platform. So this international objective hasn't been reached yet. I want to tell you also a little bit about the previous research that some uh, scholars have made through the use of TED Talks and through the use of narratives and through the use of language and uh, through the use of critical thinking. So this uh, previous research is represented here with the sewing machine, because as you can see here, there are different types of sewing machines and also there are different types of sewing right so in this case those uh researches previously made have to do with different uh points of view on how to tackle for example the tedx talks so some of them point the te- point uh, to the tedx talks as a pedagogical tool so uh, they analyze how the TEDx helps students understand the way the, 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 the speaker communicates, what verbs does he use, uh, what grammar does she use, okay? What about the rhetorics of the language? Okay, so they use a text as analysis of the language itself. Some other studies uh, I've browsed looked for the semantics, semantics, rhetorics, pragmatics of the language, uh, and syntax of the language too. So how does the person, how does the, 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 the speaker communicate? What's his body language? Okay, what's his communicative intention? In what way does he or she increase the pitch? And what does he want to do with that? So that's another type of analysis. Another type of analysis about the variety of TED Talks and their impact on society has to do um, with how the TEDx Talks help students see or uh, not really see, but lose the fear of speaking. Okay, how do they help? The TED Talks also research has... um, analyzed how students improve listening skills by using the TED Talks, how students improve their reading skills by reading the transcripts from the TED Talks, and how students also improve the speaking as they attempt to imitate the way uh, the TED uh, speakers speak, right? So... This is, this is one thing uh, about the analysis also of TED Talks. And the last one I wanted to share with you has to do with uh, the analysis on content. So some TED Talks have focused on the content itself. I give you one example, which is about infidelity and um, 
there is, I forgot the word, infidelity and uh, fidelity in uh, marriages. So this study focuses on how different TED Talks have uh, tackled the topic of infidelity and fidelity in marriages and what's the speaker's communicative intention when he addresses the topic of fidelity or infidelity. So it's more like a study on the, on the content itself of the TED, nothing yet about how the TED Talks uh, promote or provoke identity or uh, narratives or political action in the classroom. There is another um, field which is about social identity, voices in community. So I've been uh, looking for some research that focuses on social identity in the English classroom. So that there is a lot of research that focuses on how the identity of one person is built by the voices of the community where he or she studies and how that identity can be highly developed or not so developed depending on the community in which this student coexists, okay? So basically the, the, the research I've been finding uh, for the social identity has to do with that. The varieties of identi identities that emerged and are built through the voices in communities. And then uh, there is a last field which has to do with languages and narratives. So here is where the narrative um, field comes. And it says, once you study a language, once you have a second language, third language, fourth, etc. But once you have another language different from your mother tongue, your narrative completely changes. Not only your life narrative, but also the language narrative changes. Let's understand this narrative not as just the writing part or the narratives as a storytelling. No, uh, these narratives have to do with the way I live the language, as I was telling you before, with the habitats, the way I live the language and the way I communicate through the language and also what do I have to tell from my experience learning the language? So you see, the narratives have to do more with just telling a story, but the narratives in this case specifically for the study has to do with how I use the language in order to build my experience with the language itself or with the process of learning the language. OK, so this is what I was investigating in different um, or in, in previous research. OK, and that was how researchers or scholars all over the world have been working on TED Talks, how uh, they have been working on the on, on the social identity or on the identity built through their communities and also how scholars and researchers have studied languages and the narratives that emerge out of the languages that they study. In this case, uh, not only English, but it can be again a second language or a foreign language. Good. So I continue here with the theoretical framework studied so far. So I already started or checked some of the research that has been made in those three fields. Now, in the theoretical framework, we have a really big, 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 big exploration. Um, and it's it goes through three fields. The first one is the English language threats. So as you see, here, we're focusing more on the threat and how the threat or, yeah, how the threat represents the English language. OK, so this one is entitled Narratives to Build Memory, Know Others and Oneself, Strengthen Thinking and Relate Ideas. So here I, um, I am using Gadamer's 1998 uh, focus or theory about inhabiting a language okay so he focuses on how one person inhabits a language in a very specific way and in a very personal way that no one can no one else can do it the same way okay and how those narratives on language 
strengthen my identity, my way of thinking, and my analysis as well. So in, in, the, in, the, in the thesis paper I've been writing, I go through these seven fields. I just want to tell you uh, a little bit about each one. So the problem of an English language, the eternal problem of how to teach English, how to learn English, what's best, what's not so good, what are the innovations, how should I teach? for example, uh, here comes a discussion around English language learning. So what about um, this approach to teaching? What about the other approach to teaching? Uh, why is it important to learn English? Is it important to learn English for work, for studying? Maybe your job uh, fires you because you don't know English or maybe you can get a promotion because you know it or maybe you can study overseas because you know it or maybe you need to study overseas to learn it so these discussions is what I pretty much develop in the second aspect about English language learning the third one is the paradigm of native or non-native I'm pretty sure that we have always been told uh, to, to, to speak English or to imitate the native, uh, the native accent, but somehow we have had our identity very well defined and somehow we say, I want to imitate the native speaker way or I don't want to imitate it. I want to keep my own roots. So also there is this big discussion between the native and non-native way of speaking English. And in number four, different ways of teaching and learning English as well. It has to do also with the approaches. I think that I was skipping a little bit between two and four. So it has to do with the approaches to teaching what's best, okay, what's not so good. And the combination of approaches also, which is completely valid, not only taking an approach to teaching, but mixing a little bit more depending on the student's needs. The fifth one has to do with how culture is always in the language and how when we study a language we do have to study its culture and vice versa when we study a culture we also have to go or relate somehow the language so that's why also we have number six which is english for intercultural speakers so it has to do not only with learning a language to express culture or expressing culture through a language but also how in how the students and we teachers can also become intercultural speaking speakers through the language through the study of the language and through the use of the language you know and finally english as a language of possibilities this one discusses all the all the doors that are opened thanks to english we can understand material thanks to English. We can understand readings, articles, the same TED Talks if they are not translated in another language. We can also understand them through English. We can understand movies in English, series in English, everything that is written in English. Or let's not say English, let's say other languages. Basically, when we study the language, that language opens the possibilities to many things, not only understanding videos, music, movies, etc., understanding people, content, articles, going to another country, being able to communicate with others. And now look at us here. We are in this conference. We all speak English and that's why we are here. I wished I could be there knowing to you and talking to you and sharing experiences with you, everything through English. So if we didn't have the language, we wouldn't have this lovely possibility and this amazing possibility of gathering today in this Akpitizel. We wouldn't have been able to do that. So I also discuss in this part of my paper as English for possibilities. Okay, focusing on Gadamer's 1998 uh, theory on inhabiting a language. The second one, uh, Guarin. Guarin is uh, my it is a is a PhD from the university where I'm studying. Also, my PhD, and he's a Colombian teacher. So I uh, recommend you to to go a little bit more into reading what his uh, theory is about. Um, Guarini is a Colombian teacher, well, a Colombian professor who focuses on the didactic field, 
of education. So the second uh, theoretical framework that I develop is narratives in the education of subjects within, within the didactic fields. So he studies the didactic fields in Spanish. He doesn't speak English, but I used his theory because he has um, a lot of fields that we can actually study when we are working with English as um not only as English language arts, but also when we are working with English language teaching, okay? One, I think that the titles in this case are really explanatory, and since this uh, has uh, two slides, so I'm just going to focus on, the, on, on a little summary of each. So, for example, number one is the valuable role of the narratives. The second, how the didactic field can help us build a collaborative construction. The third one is how this didactic field also can help us express ourselves. Number four pretty much asks us if we are able to, to break paradigms, to innovate, and to put pieces together in order to make changes and you know uh, have a completely different perspective of what English language learning has meant to you in your context and say hey let's do this I've got this idea why don't we do this you know so that's question number four about if we are able to widen our site okay number five is uh, pretty much how the collective constructions of language in the same didactic field help us establish territory and also personal identity number six how we can be all the time as teachers innovate with different uh, didactic pedagogical fields and uh, seven changing experience has to do with how we as teachers change our own personal spirits when we are um innovating and when we are using the narratives not only our personal narratives as teachers and how we are including a different innovative uh, pedagogical approach but how the students narratives helps us also understand how each person as an individual is different is important and builds his or his own territory in the didactic fields of the classroom these are the last four, which are reading the time in time. So this one invites us to keep in mind always the context, not only the context that we've always had during all the time, but the particular context that I have right now. As I told you, this study began in, 2000, in 2019. Now I'm in 2023. And believe me, each year, this process and this research has been changing somehow in a different way because the context has changed. The students also have changed. So we have to read the time in time, uh, broaden the critical thinking horizons, and also keep in mind the importance of our historical presence in education. So not only the context that we have in the classroom, but how education has been changing in our country or in our cities also. Read that context and analyze it to see how we can help from our classrooms to that context of education that we are having. And finally, uh, how we can make world representations or representations of the world from our language classroom too. The last one, uh, the last uh, field of study in this theoretical framework has to do with political subjects of, um, hmm, this one, no, this one is a type of mistake, sorry. This one is political subjects uh, of the classroom, dynamics of identity and otherness. So in here, it has to do with how the students can make it possible to have or think about a hope classroom, a hope classroom that enables the students to think critically about topics of their interest, to make, I don't know what we can say, to make room to, for students to think differently, for make, to make also room for students to, to say, I'm interested in this topic, I want to investigate a lot about it, and I want to tell the world what I think about it, okay? That's what the political subjects is about when it comes to the HOPE classroom, okay? The second one is in Spanish, 
intentionally. It's la revelación de la gente en el discurso y la acción. So pretty much in this case, we have to focus again on how I, as a student, how I express through the speech, but not in this case, the speech, the oral speech, but the written speech, and how here I express myself when I talk to others. So here is the pre and here is the actual uh, situation. And finally, unsound value. So here, this one, the political subject field tackles how each individual places value to the topic he or she discusses and how that value is, ex is um, expressed to others and how that expression helps me understand the points of view of others and how I configurate my own way of thinking, okay? In here, I take two authors, Freire and Anna Harind from 2005, and here Freire from 1979, and the classroom of hope. Okay, so now let's talk business, the methodology. Once I have all that theoretical framework, all those ideas about what to do with TED Talks, what about the narratives, what about identity, what about uh, the collective construction of knowledge, what about critical thinking and everything, I said, we are going to make our own TED Talks. Students are going to make their own TED Talks, okay? And here they are. So these are, well, first, this is me right here, longer hair. And the, here are um, the 2019-2018 students, okay? 2019-2020, sorry. 2019-2020 students. Um, these are the eighth, or they were the eighth graders uh in that moment and uh, they were choosing different types of topics that i'm going to tell show them to you in a minute okay and again we gotta keep in mind that each student as an individual has a completely different configuration of reality the studies and sees the world in a different way and that way they communicate to others what they configurate in their minds about the world. So we treat each student as an individual, just in case, of course, we have uh, the parental consent to be showing their, their, uh, their pictures and also to be talking about them. We also have the, the parental consent. So don't worry about that. Good. And so I said, hey, guys, we are going to make our own TEDx. So this was our official TEDx. You can browse it on the net and you can find it uh, over there. Our, our, our license was given for TEDx Youth at Colegio Cumbres Bogota. So that's the name of our school. And we made our independently organized TED event. You can browse it on the web and on the web you can see uh, the biographies of our students um, and the official, this official, very official event uh, took place this year in May 19. So it was again a long process as I was telling you. So everything started as a classroom practice and then it evolved to getting the license and then using the license and then making students make their own TED Talks and then making this event possible okay so uh some of the some of the topics um that students chose um have to do over here uh-huh with this ones so i'm not gonna read them to you i'm just gonna give you some time to look at them uh and these ones here were the topics chosen by the girls as I told you at the very beginning, we have two different classrooms, one boys, one girls. So these are the topics. I think, I think, yeah, I think I'm going to, I'm going to be extending uh, 10 more minutes. Yeah, 10 more minutes. Because um, uh, I'm not ready yet. I'm not done yet. But I'm going to try also to, to start wrapping up pretty soon. These are the girls topics. These ones here were the boys topics. So lots of things, lots of things. Again, each student has a different interest and a different way of thinking. Uh 
okay? And here comes the second set of topics. These ones were for the next year, okay? So we began 2019, 2020. These ones were 2020, 2021. Different students, different uh, topics. Good. And here, the topics from the boys. Uh, no, Anna, I don't hear anything. No, I don't, Anna. I don't hear anything. I don't. Okay, so I wanna I wanna show you here the results. Yeah, but no, Anna, I I don't hear anything from the auditorium. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this one maybe. I love WhatsApp. <laughs> It's actually the best tool ever. We can communicate very well through 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 WhatsApp. I love WhatsApp. Uh, so you tell me, Anna. How the pandemic changed people's habits, trash in the ocean, animal suffering, why are we afraid of death, medical services. The auditorium, yay. <laughs> Good, okay. Uh, mental illness, Got it. consumerism, mm -hmm. how long is life, vulnerability, uh, bullying, Spanish culture, raping, feminism in fashion. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, thank you. I can hear you now. That's good. Thank you. Excellent. This is, and this is the last one. Okay. Cancer solutions, uh, homophobia, animal mis mistreatment, animal rights and experimentation, uh, violence in Colombia, my point of view about life why are video games good so those are some examples mm -hmm. thank, thank you. you thank you very much you, you 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 may continue thank you i can hear you now so that's really good i'm not alone <laughs> good so these Great. were the, the students topics in in both years okay and i want to show you some of the results so you know more than more than the TED talks, more than having students communicate uh, in a day, more than the event itself, more than the license is what you can get from their experience. Some of them were really deep into their topics. So when we are talking, for example, about the, the topic of Spanish culture, so we have here Sofia. She's a Spanish girl and she's a lot into Spain. So she was talking about a topic of her own interest and the day of the event, she communicated so well because she was into the topic and she could tell the audience something new about the Spanish culture. And people were like, I, I really understood. I really learned something. Some other examples from, from the students are this. So some students can get to express their personal lives. And I think that's one of the biggest achievements so far from this study. And it's how can a student express his identity, his or her identity, from the narrative of a TEDx talk and communicate to others, communicate to the world what his life is about, What's, ha what's happening inside? Maybe were you a bullying victim? Maybe were you an anxiety victim? Maybe during the COVID-19, you were alone, your family was not around with you, and you ended up 
feeling lonely, what happened? You know, so some of these students, and in this case, of course, for privacy reasons, I won't, I'm not able to share uh, the, the specific experiences with you, but I'm telling you this in a very broad context. This TEDx was also an opportunity for students to express what they had in their hearts, what they had deep inside them, and they couldn't or they were not able to express before. You know, some of these TED Talks were really touching, really, really touching, because you could actually perceive lots of feelings inside them and lots of feelings that, in my opinion, were desperately coming out from long ago, but were not able to be expressed because the, the tool was not given to them. So students also found a way to express their own identity here through the TEDs, to express who they are, or maybe what they thought about a specific topic. Why is a student interested in the cancer solutions or about the violence in Colombia? Why is a student interested, for example, in scouts or in bullying, or why is a student interested in political ignorance, you know? So these kinds of things makes us think, we as teachers or we as educators in the field we are, that we need to empower our students' critical thinking. Why? Because when we empower our students' critical thinking, we can actually see, hmm, these images are really blurry. I don't know if it's my internet, hope it is not. Hope you don't see them as blurry as I do. So this, uh, this platform is only a platform. You can use it as a pedagogical tool if you want, but more than the pedagogical tool is what goes, what goes beneath, okay? And this is the quilting experience, okay? This is the quilting experience. How we, with the sewing machine, the needle, the thread, etc. how we can make these four things. Narratives to express the habitats of language. How we can make inspiration through the political action that students express. How we can make reflection through critical thinking. And how we can make configuration by establishing or making or developing a student's personal identities in the English language classroom. So, with this, I just want to say thank you. These are my contact emails for if you want to write down or drop me a line. Um, and well, this is it. Thank you very much. I would love to have been, well, to have had the possibility to, to be there. I couldn't, but well, here I am telling you my experience. Thank you very much. Now, I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Grande. Thank you, for, Thank you. for your presentation. Uh, we will open now the floor for a 10 minutes uh, Q&A session in case some of you have questions. So we have a question over there. We have a couple. OK, let's see. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, I do. Well? I can yes. hear okay, you. Yes, OK, great. OK. Can I have? Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Grande. Good morning. Hi. Hi. My name is Andy Cascante. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for the information that you share with us. I know this is not an interview, but I have several questions that I'd like um, if you can answer. Okay. Um, you were talking about Colegio Cumbres Bogota, right? Yes. That's the place where you took your investigation. Um, is this institution public or private? Good question, private. It's a private institution. Now, regarding the group of students that you said that you worked with, you mentioned two groups, one boy, uh, one boys and girls. Um, these groups were them when you started back in 2019, were, was it the same group that you're working with right now or have you changed the, the groups, let's say, through the years? Mm -hmm. The groups changed. There was one group for 2019, 2020, and 2020 to 2021. So that's why the topics are also also different. And the configuration changes so much. And the focus is on working, on reading the time, reading your context in that moment, because it changes a lot. 
things. So about that, th this is where I'm going. Um, would you say that right now their English level, let's say, can you measure it in terms of a, a one, a two, B1? Or how is it? Okay, their English level is really high. So I would say they go into a B1 plus or a B2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry for asking so many questions, but this is just <laughs> okay. it's because your project is so big and it implies so many things. And, and like yeah. just the, the fact that they were able to develop a whole TDX by their, themselves, it's like, to me, it sounds very complex. So I'm very intrigued about all of these things that I'm asking. Okay. Um, and that's why it's taking a lot of time. We made the official event in May this year, but we started mm -hmm. in 2019. <laughs> yeah, it's it's taken a long, a long time. So if you can say like an estimate, how many weekly hours do they take English classes? Okay, they take two hours a week, a day, so 10 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And very intensive English. <laughs> and well, also to give you more context, they also study science in English and social studies in English and arts in English. Okay, and I assume that since it's a private institution, maybe most of them or just like a big group of them have been studying there since they were kids like younger some of them have but, but we also receive uh, some new students but they come from other schools where their english level is really high too okay and during all of these process because it is such a big uh, thing to accomplish how have you managed the tutoring how have you managed taking time with them um how how have you done it beautiful question i think that that's my favorite question uh we have tedx mondays uh and just in mondays we focused on ted so we say okay let's work on ted and we do that only on mondays mm -hmm. but every single monday during all the school year so would you take let's say this monday for one student and then next monday you would uh sit with another one or how would you do it during the class time beautiful questions so actually uh what we do in the tedx monday is uh to the to the different kinds of things so for example they work in pairs and they share each other's ted so they peer feedback they peer evaluate and sometimes as they are peer evaluating i call one by one and i say okay let me see your work in terms of the writing script okay or in terms of developing their idea sometimes they say uh, i say it's time to do further research so they make research and they also i take time to call them one by one to check their work sometimes we also have some sessions in which they start rehearsing so they present in front of us and we give them feedback or sometimes also i make groups of two or groups of three and they present one to another so that they can start losing their um, fear of speaking gaining more confidence and they can get feedback from their classmates which i really love i think it's one of the biggest things because it's not me telling them what to do what not to do but it's their classmates as different people which will be part of the audience and behave as audience okay hey i didn't like this i didn't understand this why don't you use this or why did you do that i didn't understand it so when you get this peer feedback it's really good because they feel like much more confident to receive it and also to give feedback mm -hmm. yeah thank you and my last question um how successful would you say that it's been this project every year with your students how successful has it been ha have you I know that it's not finished yet, but have you reached the goals that, that you had at the beginning in terms of speaking and expressing themselves and everything that you hoped for? Has it been successful? Well, you know, it's been it's been very successful. Mostly, I would say the, 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 the biggest advantage for me as a teacher is to have the student express himself 
communicate what is inside. Again, there was one student uh, who was bullied, one student who suffered fr from homophobia. There was one student who was having like uh, anxiety disorders. And uh, there was one student who had some psychological issues uh, related to, to like suicide, etc. And when you have the student or when you provide the student the possibility in a free way, because I didn't say you got to write about this, you got to write about that. No, I said you write about what you really care, what you feel like telling others. So when you when you have those students expressing themselves to the world and communicate what is very deep inside them, I think that's my biggest uh, goal reached so far and it was not a goal expected to 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 be um achieved in the in the research it was not expected at all but it just happened and i think that's the most valuable thing things about language and everything well i think that they are going in the process and of course each student's level may vary depending on 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 their english background so i leave that language ability in a second um, perspective, I would say. But my focus is more on expressing their identity, critical thinking and uh, provoking action into others, you know? Okay, Ms. Gander, thank you so much for your presentation. It was very interesting. I'm sure there are tens of questions more. Uh, but I think what we will do is uh, just pass on your email uh, address. Mm -hmm. So Perfect. if anyone anyone has qu extra questions, additional questions, they can ask you directly, okay? Yeah, Thank we don't you, have but... coffee break together. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so please let, let us give Ms. Grande a big round of applause for her presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.